Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about um, another way to analyze the ChipSeq data, differential bonding analysis for ChipSeq data. I think Dr. Jun Wang already talked about uh, how to use Next to do the peak calling, what is the quality control for the ChipSeq peaks you can get from um, ChipSeq data. Um, in this lecture, we um, uh, analyze ChipSeq data from another perspective. We do ChipSeq data comparison. Because we know uh, when we do some uh, experiment study, we are not only interested in one transient factor, one histone modification, in one cell type. You could be well interested in one transient factor across multiple cell type, or um, one cell type across a multiple transient factor. So in that case, we want to do some differential bonding analysis to say in different biological contexts, whether the bonding loci or uh, TF or histone modification could be changed. So that is the purpose uh, for this analysis. So before we go to the differential bonding analysis, we can uh, briefly have a review for single chip seq data analysis. So for single chip seq data, data analysis, all the reads are aligned to the genome, and the peaks is uh, considered as the enriched region of reads such as you can use max to get those peaks. And the enriched uh, regions are potential uh, TF bonding or histone uh, modification sites. And uh, of course, in some cases, uh, uh, for experimental design, we not only have one uh, chip seq data set, we have multiple chip seq data set, uh, and we also have the replicates. And here is an example. So basically, we have HCK uh, 27AC, a uh, histone modification in H1 cell 9. We have two uh, replicates here, which is marked as a red. Um, correspondingly, we also have one control data set here. So, control data set the meaning measures the chromatin like noisy background. Because some enrichment could be um, uh, from the chromatin uh, itself, it didn't, that's, that's, it didn't mean. This is an enriched region of the TF bonding. So that is why when in the ChipSeq uh, uh, experimental, we not only have the IP data set, but we also have the control data set. And uh, another is also for the same uh, histone modification, H3K27AC, but in a different cell line, it's K562 cell line. We also have two replicates, which is marked as blue here. And co correspondingly, we also have one control data set here. And uh, um, the characteristics of chip seq data, we can see usually we have very few uh, biological replicates because in the wet lab, it's in very few cases we generate tens of tens or even more than 10 replicates for each condition. This is very few. Usually we generate two or three, uh, maybe around five uh, biological replicates in each condition. Um, the second characteristic is uh, over dispersion rate counts, which is means the rate are not that, the rate counts in different regions are not uniform, but it could be uh, have, have a, lot of, uh, a lot of variations in different uh, uh, genomic regions. The third characteristic is the uh, variable library size, uh, which is means in different days that the library size could be different and the total number of mapped rates could be also different. And uh, the last one, which is a very important one, that it distinguish a uh, chip seq data set to iron seq data set is uh, the IP samples usually coupled with the control, or we call the input samples. So the control input samples measure the background noise of the uh, chromatin, and uh, which is decrease the uh, false positives uh, um, for the uh, detected peaks. So because if we didn't consider the control samples, if we identify uh, the peaks from the from the IP sample only, it could be a false positive because this is enrichment that could derive from the chromatin uh, background noise. So that is why you need the IP coupled with the control samples to help you to get it, uh, increase, uh, decrease the false positive and increase the accuracy for you to identify the chipset peaks. So in this case, we can see that especially for the control sample for K562 cell lines, uh, the control peaks are actually very large. So if we consider this area, if we consider this peak as, uh, it could be potentially a false positive uh, because it will also 
in this region observed uh, a high enrichment peak for both IP and the control region. And another thing we want to pay attention is like um, the peak uh, height uh, have a large variation between uh, biological replicates. So if we pay attention to K562 cell lines for the two replicates, we can say that um, the peak uh, height have a large variation in these 5KB regions. The same situation happens in H1 cell lines. So that is uh, when we, um, not only for peak coding purpose, uh, we also we need to consider the control sample. But also, if we compare about uh, like uh, this histone modification across these two cell lines, so we also need to consider this biological replication and also the control background. Otherwise, uh, the potential false, false positive could be happen. So why we do a differential bonding analysis? Uh, as we talked about before, the differential TF bonding and host modification size can reveal differential um, gene regulatory activity. And the uh, uh, chip sig data set could be coupled with iron sig data set to investigate a compli uh, complicated gene regulatory rep uh, network. So um, that is means usually we have a TF, one TF across multiple conditions. So we want to say, okay, this TF can regulate a different set of genes in different conditions. All the histone modification could regulate different set of genes in different conditions. And we want to see um, what is caused the different regulative activities. So that is important for us to identify uh, this differential bonding load side for one TF across multiple conditions or one condition across multiple TF. So that is the purpose for uh, differential bonding analysis. So when we talk about the differential bonding analysis, so we uh, may be uh, automatically link us to think about the differential gene expression analysis. So what is the similarity and what is the uh, dissimilarity between these two data analysis? Then to compare with this, uh, we jump into the like data structure. So for differential bonding analysis, so the first step we usually merge the peaks from all the data set we have across multiple conditions to form these candidate regions. So clearly from the first step, we can see the difference between differential bonding analysis to differential gene analysis. For differential gene analysis, for example, let's take a human as an example. We only have like 22K genes. So in terms of that, the dimension for the gene in your analysis is fixed. However, in differential bonding analysis, the, different, uh, the dimension for the lumbar peaks actually are uh, different from data set to data set and from condition to condition. So in that case, we needed to merge the peaks from all data sets to form the candidate region. So this is uh, uh, the first uh, the difference between um, these two data analysis. And then we count the rate counts for the candidate region. I think this is a similar uh, between differential bonding analysis and the differential uh, expressor gene analysis because in this case, we do the rate count for the candidate region, and for defending gene analysis, we do the rate count for each gene or for the exons of uh, different exons of each gene. The last is perform hypothesis testing on the candidate region. This is also the same between differential bonding analysis and the differential um, gene expression analysis. So here we can see this is the uh, data structure we have a chromosome start and end for each candidate region. We have cancer samples, we have normal samples. We want to identify the differential regulatory activity for this transmitting factor between cancer samples and the normal samples. And for cancer samples, we can see this is one condition. We have two replicates, two IP samples, and one control sample. For the normal samples, we, can have, uh, we also have two IP samples and one control sample. So for some methods, uh, they only compare the IP samples directly by taking the average of the replicates uh, for each IP condition and do the uh, like fault change. Or maybe they just uh, take, consider all the replicates uh, like what we did for different gene expression analysis, use the DSIG2 or use HR. However, one characteristics for differential bonding analysis or for chip seek data analysis is like, we need to consider the background noise uh, for the identified peaks. So that is, uh, we need to consider the reads generated by the control sample when we do this differential analysis. So that is the major, uh, 
major difference between differential bounding analysis and the differential expressor gene analysis. So this is a review for the current method for RDB analysis. We can do the overlap analysis. So we just look at the unique peaks for different, uh, different uh, chip-seq data set. For example, we have one chip-seq data set, we have another chip-seq data set. We do the peak counting for each one. Then we can do the overlap, how many, chip uh, uh, how many peaks are overlapped, how many peaks are unique for each data set. However, for this drawback for this analysis, like for the common peaks, it's harder for us to identify um, this like uh, uh, differential signal because we just uh, do the co uh, overlap of the peak, uh, consider one of the error. We didn't consider the how many reads are mapped to each peak. So that is the drawback for this overlap analysis. Even if this is uh, many papers use this uh, overlap analysis, but uh, it uh, de um, decreases the potentially uh, differential bounding peaks uh, for this is overlap the peaks across multiple data sets. Uh, the second uh, um, method uh, is based on a diff uh, ANSIC DE method, such as um, a diff bound or deep chip. Uh, I think that for this, it's two methods, they have a, a nice interface for you to input the uh, peaks uh, called identified by other methods, such as a max. However, the internal uh, structure or back, back end method, I think it's based on the ANSIC DE method. You use agile based or DC2 based. A third category is based on microarray of the analysis, such as MA norm. And uh, the last category is based on mixture model. So mixture model is have a two component. One is considered that the uh, component, another is non-DE component. So this is based on the mixture model. However, based on if uh, some method consider the control data, other method that didn't uh, consider the control data. So when we uh, classify all the method based on this criteria, uh, we can classify uh, for methods that use IP data only, such as the bound, DB chip, MNO, and the DAM. Uh, for the method that use difference uh, of IP and control, uh, control data, these are three methods that use uh, diff bound, uh, DB chip, and uh, chip compare. So this is a method actually developed by our group. And um, we also want to mention uh, why it's important to consider the control data in DB analysis. Um, the data from IP and the control are actually are correlated, indicated that the IP data and are influenced by the backgrounds. So that is important. So if we um, also um, consider about this example, so we can see that for K5 um, 6279 for the two replicates, if we see the enrichment for the IP sample, we also see the enrichment for the control sample. So that is why um, we needed to consider the control sample. Also for this, you see this to a uh, red line here, if we focus on this region, if we didn't consider the control sample, we just focus on, on this IP samples, we can see obviously enrichment of the peaks for the K562 cell nines of this histone modification compared with the peaks in H1 cell nine for this histone modification. So this could be potentially a differential bounding NOSA. However, if we consider the control samples, uh, when we do this candle calculation, we found that um, this is not necessarily the case because the background of control for H1 is very low. However, the background of control in K562 cell nines is very high. So this could be a false positive differential bonding low side. So that is why a ignoring control could need to very bias the results. That is why when we do the differential bonding analysis, we need to consider the control into the uh, uh, into the modeling and the data analysis. Um, and to uh, tackle the problem, uh, we develop a statics method to, uh, in a mixed uh, hierarchical linear model framework to consider both the control and the IP samples well, when we do the differential bounding analysis. And uh, we develop a software chip compare uh, uh, deposit into our back contact package. So the input data sample is like this. We have conditions, like we have two conditions. We have one histone modification or transition factor in the two condition. We have IP rates and the control rates respectively. It could be in a bad file, could be in a bad file. And we have identified peaks reported by um, Max or other peak coding software, such as the Sys Genome, um, 
Then we have this input file already. We have all this file ready, and this is the configuration file. We just use this configuration file as an input for this software, and we get our output in a table. The output for each row is the candidate region. We can candidate region could be candidate differential bounding loci based on the a certain kind of statistical criteria. We report for the IP counts and the control counts for each candidate region, and we have a p-value associated with each candidate region and the posterior probability. So basically for each region, we can rank based on the p-value or posterior probability, and the top rank of the candidate region could be the differential bounding loci. Uh, thank you all. I think that is uh, for the differential bounding analysis. And uh, Hopefully uh, this lecture could be helpful in your study and research. Thank you.